alphabet can be alphabet can be different. There's no reason why they have to have similar similar looking demand curves. So we have Betty's demand curve, which I'll label D sub A. Or sorry, Al's demand curve, which I'll label D sub A, and Betty's demand curve, which I'll label D sub B. So how do we figure out market demand? Well, we start off at a given price. <laughs> and we just sort of figure out, well, what's the total quantity demanded in the market at that given price? Okay, so whatever price this is, I'll be kind and call it piece of one. Okay, but whatever this price is, you know, how much does how much does Al demand at that price? Al demands zero. How much does Betty demand? Well, she demands, call it Q1 to B. Q1 B, meaning Betty's, Betty's quantity when the price is when the price is at P1. And the market demand is then just simply going to be whatever whatever Betty demands. That's true. <laughs> Now let's suppose the price is a little bit lower, let's call it P2. And I'm deliberately choosing this price here to be exactly where, uh, exactly the y-intercept on Al's demand curve. So here Al is still demanding zero, and now Betty is demanding a little bit more. QB2, and so the market demand is also QB2. But now let's suppose the price is a little bit lower. We got here P3. Now we've got Al demanding some stuff at, at, the, at the third price. And we've got Betty demanding some of this product as well. And so now the market demand is just the quantity that Al demands plus the quantity that Betty demands. This be something from here. And what you can see here now is we're just tracing out this market demand curve. If you were to draw this market demand curve, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the fill in the dots here, fill in the, fill in the blanks, the market demand curve would actually look something like the following. It would kind of have a little, I'm not sure this isn't perfect. Um, it, it should look a lot like, up until this pink, there's a pink point right here, so let me just sort of circle that. Up until this pink point, and I haven't, I haven't drawn a perfect picture here, but up until this pink point, it should really basically look like Betty's demand curve. Okay, because up, because up here, we're basically, you know, Betty's the only one in the market. When the price is above P2, she's the only one in the market, so the demand curve should look like her demand curve. And then it's going to flatten out once the price drops below P2, because now Betty and Al are both going to be demanding positive quantities of this good. And so now we have to think about both of their, both of their quantities. But basically, I mean, the, the idea is very simple. We're just simply at a given price figuring out how much each individual consumer in the market wants, and we're adding that together to get the market demand. And so now we have our, our market demand curve. And naturally, uh, you know, if you think that the individual demand curves are downward sloping, you think that the market demand curve is going to be downward sloping as well. Okay. So question about this. Questions about this. No, this, this market demand curve is not linear. Um, why is it not linear? It's, uh, so, I'm not, so there are lots of ways to answer the question. So the reason why it's not linear is, that, first of all, the slope changes right there at that point that I drew a circle. <coughs> you, 
you should, but just look at the picture here. When the price is above P2, the only person in the market is Betty. She's the only person who wants to purchase. It's not until the price drops below P2 that we start adding in Al's demand as well. And so up when the price is above P2, this demand curve should look like Betty's demand curve. And then, it's going to, then the slope is going to change when Al starts entering into the market as well. So we're adding, we're, 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 we are adding their demand, but first of all, let me, let me sort of clarify that a lot of people refer to this as um, horizontally adding the demand curves. Okay, so it's sort of like we're, we're going out horizontally and we're seeing, you know, what's you know, sort of from a horizontal perspective, how much does Al, Al, Al want to demand at this price? How much does Betty demand? And let's add those together horizontally. <coughs> I don't think I, I, I get the sense from the okay, So try it, does that answer your question? Okay, good, okay, it did get it. Yeah, other questions? Yeah? Was it always be line? No, these don't have to be linear. So, um, Al's demand curve doesn't have to be a straight line, Betty's demand curve doesn't have to be a straight line, and as a consequence, the market demand curve doesn't have to be a straight line. They have to be down for sloping. They don't have to be straight lines. And in fact, going back to this, you know, if you go back to this derivation I did on the previous slide, when I connected the dots, I mean, there's nothing that, my line, in fact, really isn't exactly a straight line. And there's no reason for it to be a straight line. There's no reason for there to be a linear, a linear relationship. I tend to draw stuff linearly because it's easier to draw the pictures. But there's no reason, I mean, there's nothing, there's no reason why there has to be sort of a linear correspondence. So demand curves do not have to be straight lines for individuals, and they don't have to be straight lines for the market. Hold on, we still have two more minutes, and she's asking good questions. So let's let's listen to her questions, and then I'll let you guys go. So again, the derivative. She's asking about the derivative of the demand curve. The derivative. 